honor you and, and we just thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to fellowship together around your word. Jesus, now be the teacher in this moment. Holy Spirit, we honor you and we thank you that you uh, give me clarity of thought and clear articulation to make known the mysteries of the gospel. And I just thank you, God, for the, 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 the feeling, the sense of your comfort and, and, and knowing that, God, we are winners because of you. I just thank you right now that, Satan, you're absolutely defeated in every area of our lives, in our homes, our lives, in our bodies, in our finances, in our relationships. And we just thank you, Father, that you are gathering us together for a harvest, that by the end of this message, there are people that need to have a life-giving relationship with you. They'll be free to choose you as Lord and Savior, Jesus. And there are people that need a church, not just want a church, they need one. And, and we want them here. And by the end of this message, God, they'll know there'll be an unction. They may not have all the signs, but there'll be something within them letting them know that they need to be here. And we pray that they'll receive the comfort and the love and the encouragement to just simply make the step to be a part of the Faith Center on today. But most of all, God, we're, we want to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that you have done and what you're about to do in this moment of freedom. And all of God's people say amen. Come on, let's make our faith confession for the word of God. Let's do it. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. I'm both a hearer and a doer of the word. I live to please God. Therefore, I walk by faith and not by sight. I will possess my promises. I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. My faith is my evidence. In Jesus' name, you say amen. Would you look at someone beside you and say, freedom belongs to you. Take possession of it. You may be seated. This is the last segment that I have in our freedom series today. I will tell you that this is one that I believe is going to be freeing in a way that you probably did not anticipate. I want to talk about freedom from stress, anxiety, and depression. Because one of the things that we have a challenge with in the body of Christ is, number one, people not acknowledging that they are stressed, have anxiety, or depressed, or we have this thing where you cannot talk about it. And, and, and I believe that these tie interchangeably with something that's really on the rise called mental health or mental wholeness. So if you'll just really listen to me today, this might not be a good shouter, but I really want you free. I really want you free. And if you're not stressed, if you're not depressed or you're not anxious, I just want you to hang in there. Just take this information because you could potentially minister to someone in your one of your friends or your family. Or you just hang on to rem remember this the next time you're presented with a situation to be stressed, to be anxious, or to take on depression. So 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, I want you to look at that and let's see what the Lord has to say to us on today. Say freedom from stress, anxiety, and depression. Now I'm going to, you know, this is, this is a series within itself. But I'm going to try to hit some of the things today. And all those stress, anxiety, and depression are very different um, there are some commonalities that we can address. And then I'm, I'm, I'm one under the school of thought that there are uh, natural ways to address these. And there are also spiritual ways to address these. I don't believe, I'm not going to say you don't need to go see anybody or talk to anybody. No, there are trained professionals that are able to help you break down the areas of your life that can help you declutter and see things from a clearer perspective. So if you need to seek out counsel, look at me, y'all. Ain't nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with your faith. And don't make nobody you think or anybody tell you you crazy or something is wrong. No, you, you, you're crazy not to go get help. And they crazy for not knowing the benefit of people that God has placed in this earth to be able to help people operate through those situations in life. 
But then there's a spiritual remedy that God places in his word, and we're going to look at part of that today. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and let's make this happen. It says, uh, first and the very God. That's not, Okay, let's go. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. How, how does he want to sanctify us? Oh, not, not Holy Spirit. Whole as as in a person. Are y'all with me? Sanctify you wholly. Uh, and I pray your, come on y'all. I pray God your what? Whole, your, your what now? Your whole spirit and what? Okay, so he says whole spirit. Can we see that the connotation is still whole soul? Because he didn't say whole spirit, whole soul, whole. He's saying your whole spirit because the, the start is I want him to sanctify you wholly. So he, I pray to God your whole spirit and what soul and what body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Christ Jesus. I'm going to read this in the uh, amplified version. Just check it out. It says now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through uh, and through that is separate you from the profane and vulgar things make you pure and whole and undamaged consecrated to him so let me stop right there with undamaged check this out just because you are where you are emotionally mentally physically spiritually does not mean that you are damaged I, I just had to say that he says I want to make you undamaged consecrated to him set apart for his purpose and may your spirit and soul and body be com kept complete complete and be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ let's look at this verse put that verse back up there the, the, our, our introductory scripture in the King James Version and let's look at three simple things to see three simple things to see number one God is the God of peace Amen. Amen. say that God is the God of peace. God is the God of peace. God is the God of peace. Because whether you're stressed, depressed, or anxious, you need peace. And God is the God of peace. Uh, number two, he desires to set you apart wholly, not just partially. Okay. When he says, I want to set you apart, he's talking about your whole man. I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to move. Don't be an A student in church and an F minus student in life. See, some people know how to do church. All you got to do is hang around church. You'll learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you can't cope in life. You can't cope on your job. You can't deal with your children. You can't deal with your spouse. None of your family can get along with you. You can't even get along with yourself. The only time you have peace is when you sleep. And then you have nightmares. <laughs> Y'all going to work with me today? He wants to set you apart what? Holy, not just part. Don't be satisfied with partial success. Seek whole life success. Number three, three simple things to see. You can be preserved. You can be preserved. I was going to bring some in, but I didn't want to start a riot. But if you're 40 and over, you'll understand and have an appreciation for what I'm about to talk about. But if you don't know, then it's okay because you haven't been anywhere and you haven't lived and experienced anything. And you cannot go to heaven until you've had some fresh preserves. And all the grown folks said... Yeah, you got to either be grown or country, one or the other. <laughs> you can take an apple, an apple, leave it out on the counter. Within two weeks, it's not crunchy and crisp. It's kind of wilted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take the same apple. Instead of putting it on the counter, put it in the refrigerator. It may last a little bit longer, but then you'll start seeing bruises and things develop on it. Yeah, yeah. But you can take this same apple, cut it up. Put it in a jar, put a top on it, and seal it, and that thing will be ready for the next generation. I don't know what the mechanics is in a mason jar. I don't know what happened with that little top, but I know when it goes, that, that's right. I don't know what God gave man to, how can you put something in a jar and it be preserved? This is what God is saying. I want to get you emotionally in a place that no matter what comes to you, your emotional state will be preserved. 
Three simple things to do. There's something you have to do. Three simple things to do. Number one, embrace the God of peace. God is a God of peace, but you have to embrace the God of peace. Come on, say it with me. Embrace the God of peace. Uh, Colossians 3 and 15 says this, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. You have to let the peace of God rule in your heart. The God of peace is there, but you have to let the God of peace rule. I'm going to say that one more time. God is the God of peace. Peace is there, but you have to allow the peace to rule in your heart. Number two, number two. Step aside to be made whole. Step aside to be made whole. Can you put my scripture back up there? He says, I, I want to sanctify you wholly. Sanctify you in the very God of peace. Sanctify you wholly. I say this every time, but I really need to drive the point. Sanctification is a process. It's not a denomination. Amen. Amen. I thought this was a sanctified church. Amen. It is. Amen. But that don't mean that couples with what people call sanctified. Right. To sanctify means to set apart for sacred use. He's saying in order for you to be healed of the stress, the anxiety, and the depression, I have to pick you up, set you aside from the things that's going on so you won't just be made better, but you will be the way you need to be. And it won't be partially, it will be holy. Okay, I got enough of y'all with me. I can keep going. Number three, number three, number three. Um, three simple things to do. Preserve your spirit. See, when we're talking about your spirit, many times we want God to do all the work and we don't want to do anything. No, God gives you power. He gives you ability for you to preserve yourself that means you need to be astute enough to know which environments you need to not go into and which environments you need to go into. And look at me, y'all. Look at me, y'all. Know yourself enough to not lie to yourself to know I don't thrive in them types of environments. Can I tell on myself? Can I tell on myself? Can I tell on? My wife was like, I want to go to Miami. I want to go to South Beach. I want to go to Miami. I want to take a vacation. I want to stay down there a whole week. I said, there's too much dinner floss down there. We can't go there. We, it's too much dinner floss. Nope. We have to go in the off season. We have to go when it's cold. I don't thrive. In the, come, come. I'm trying to sanctify myself wholly. No, you just got to be, you, you, you got to know you. No, let's go. Let's, and then you got black eyes and all that kind of, uh-uh, no, uh-uh, no. It's too much dental floss, man. Alaskan cruise is great right about this time of season. We went, but we was at another beach, though. <laughs> we was at another beach. Though. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about anxiety. Let me give you my working definition for today's lesson of anxiety. The uneasiness of the mind that brings feelings and thoughts of panic, anxiousness, or discomfort. When you're anxious. You, 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 you feel unease. Now, there, there are some thoughts of panic and, 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 and I'm, I'm discomfort because I'm anxious. And then now we have stress, which is, the, the, uh, I'm sorry, depression, 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 which is the heaviness of spirit resulting in the lack of movement, motivation, and mental elevation. So when you're depressed, there's a lack of movement because you're stuck. Right, And then you're, you're not motivated because you're depressed. And then there's a lack of mental elevation because it's to depress. Your... So every time you try to think high, depression presses down the mind to keep you where you can't have movement and be motivated. So you'll feel it for a moment, but then depression comes to decompress and press down the mind. Stress, stress. 
the pressure of the mind generally reflected in the mismanagement or abuse of the body or others. When you're stressed, there's a, it's, 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 it's pressure of the mind, but what happens, it's reflected in the body. In the abuse of yourself or others. This is what stressed out people do. They mentally, they physically, they emotionally abuse themselves and other people. Okay, okay, okay. So instead of keep saying stress, anxiety, and depression, I just want to call it sad. Can I, can I do that? Stress, anxiety, depression, sad. Freedom from sad is your right. That is not God's best for you. That is not God's design for you. That is not God's will for you. You are going to receive the stimulation of faith and practical teaching today that by the end of this message, you will be free in Jesus' name. This is not to look down on you because I have been there. But I'm telling you, if you can recognize and be honest enough to identify where you are and say, if the God is the God of peace, I'm going to chase after that peace. I'm not going to argue with the man of God today. I simply want to be free. And if that's my right, I want my rights. You can live in this country and your rights be withheld from you not because they're not yours but you're ignorant to the rights that belong to you. God has put it in his word. There are rights that belong to you and I'm going to give you the illumination of knowledge today where you can open yourself up and say, I don't have to stay depressed. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to be stressed out because here's the thing. Stress Anxiety and depression is not about what happened. It's about how you processed what happened. But when you're there, you only want to talk about it. Well, he left me. You ain't the only one been left. But he left me with kids. You ain't the only one been left with kids. But he left me with kids and no car. You ain't the only one been left with no kids and no car. But he left me with no kids, no car, no money, no future, no hope, no dream. No. But you ain't the only one that left me no he kids, no car, no hope, no future, no dream. No. What I'm trying to say is, so let's say he did. Let's say he was a dog. Let's say he was sorry. Let's say he was lazy. But we got to back all the way up because he's a product of your intelligence because you chose him. Now let's go forward. So let's say he did all of that. Are you going to stay there? Are you going to get yourself up and say, I am still somebody? Because I'm still making it. I must be more resilient than I'm giving myself credit for. I'm not everything that he said I was or was not. I am going to make it because greater is he. That Don't forget the song. Because you're with not him. You're with me. Well, your mental Peace and stability cannot be determined on a person or a situation. You have control over that right now. I'm trying to help somebody. You have control over that right now. Now, 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 I'm very sensitive to, to your feelings and to the spirit of God. I don't want you to think I'm making light of the challenges and the things that you've gone through and what you're enduring in life. But what I am saying is that don't put whoo, your freedom in the hands of somebody else. Take your own freedom into your hands today. And if now I'm talking to somebody, somebody say amen. amen. Okay, let's move, let's move, let's move. Third uh, John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above, come on y'all, all things that thou mayest what? Prosper and what? Be in health, even what? As I so. Now I want you to look at health. I want, he says, this, this, is what I, I, this is what I desire. I desire that you prosper and be in health. In health, not good health. There's no good, bad health with God. It's just health. Be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Health, mental health, physical health emotional health, spiritual health. Just don't look at the scripture as body health. No, 
all the health areas of your life. God says, I want you to prosper because your soul is tied to the health of those areas. And as you prosper, your soul, your mind, your will, your imagination, your emotions, and your intellect prospers con- uh, a parallel with it. Y'all see me? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let me slow down. Let's go. Down. Here's the design of sad. Here's the design. The, the, the design of stress is, is to cause irrational behavior. The design of anxiety is to call negative anticipatory results. See, when you're anxious, you've already doomed yourself and it ain't happened yet. It's Monday, rent due Friday. You done already start making plans of where you got to move. I know they're going to come. I know. I, I know did my stuff. And I see my cousin go through this. I cannot have my stuff out on this road. <laughs> and it's Monday. You've already counted God out. You already said my tithe is not working. But see, when you're a tither, not a robber, a tither, and you're doing things the right way, it's Monday, that's when you look up and say, okay, God, now, because you're with me, now, I'm not going to fear, but I am a little antsy. And I need you to help a brother out, help a sister out. Somebody say, God, God. HBO. HBO, help a brother out. Now, 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 I read somewhere in the Bible, I don't know where it is. The man prayed and said, he need a sign? God, give me a sign. Make something happen. Can, can, you, can you handle this by wins? I believe you'll do it by that, but can you at least do, see what I'm saying? But see, that's different than sitting in the house, pulling your hair out, eating ice cream you ain't supposed to be eating. No way. Uh-uh. I'm trying, I'm trying to get us to see something, people of God. That's what anxiety makes you go ahead and make the conclusion and haven't even been the conclusion of the matter. So now, so now, anxiety. For those of you that don't need this message, please come back next week. I have something better. Those of you that need it, just say, Pastor, keep talking. To cause irrational behavior. Anxiety is to cause negative anticipatory results. Depression is to cause an uncoverable depth of emotions. It, it makes you feel you cannot recover. This is unrecoverable. I, you can't get from up under this. What can I do to rid myself of sad in my life? I'm glad you asked. Go to Isaiah. Just look at it. I want you to look at it so I can move. Isaiah, Isaiah 61 and 3. Because I can't just talk about the problem. We got to turn on the light and find the solution. Isaiah 61 and 3. I, I pray, Father, as we turn into this scripture and as we're looking at this screen, that really, God, that you free people today. That they can see that their grass is really green. That they can see that life is worth living. That they can see that, God, you've blessed them just like you've blessed others. And they don't have to compare themselves to other people. But they can just be proud of what you've given them. And if they'll work what you gave them, it'll all work. And for people that have deep-seated hurts all the way from childhood, all all the way back where they told people and people ignored them and people said they lied and they they made it up. God, if if this can just be an opener today, where they can just really walk in freedom. This isn't for likes and shares and views, God. This is for freedom of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them what? Beauty for ashes. When people ask, uh, mourn, they put ashes on their head. But he says, I want to give you some beauty for ashes. I want you to give the oil of joy for mourn. I want to do a replacement. And the, the garment of praise for the what? Okay. Can we agree? 
It does not say for the spirit of stress, for the spirit of depression, for the spirit of anxiety. But can we see in the content of this context that we can put depression, anxiety, and stress under heaviness? Okay, now, most of the times we would look at this scripture and say the antidote is put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. All you got to do is give God a praise. And you can. But I want you to see something a little bit deeper. The way that you're going to get free today is to do this number one thing. Recognize it's a spirit. No. Depression, stress, and anxiety, it's a spirit. No, it's a spirit. So you question, it's my faith. No, baby. It's a demonic attack on your mental wellness. Well, no, it's just because, you know, no, 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 no. It is Satan himself infiltrating your thought life, making you feel less than, put a period at the end of the sentence where the predicate is still being developed, and then also causing you to do things out of character, watch this, to yourself and to others, sabotaging relationships and possibilities of the future. Wow. Am I talking in here? Say it's the spirit. Okay, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Every, since you recognize it's a spirit, every spirit must be addressed by a spirit. See, you, you, you told yourself, okay, 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 hold on, one, one second. Oh, my God, my God. This is why you can be depressed, go on vacation, and come back. You told yourself, I, I, just, I just need some me time. If I can just see some water and just go and just... Just go. And I, I, I just want to go. I don't want to mess with the pool, but I just want to see one. If I can just go. If I can just go. Because pa Pastor been telling me I need to. Uh, so I just want to see one. If I can just go. And just. just. I don't want to see these people at this cubicle. If I can just go. Yeah. Girls trip. Who's with me? Okay. Where we going? Well. Myrtle, be Myrtle, peace. Hey, Myrtle. Girl, okay. Myrtle Beach. Cool. We take these sick days. We take these sick days. And you go to Myrtle Beach. You have some fun. And you come back. Because you tried to do something naturally. When you should have been doing something spiritually. This is why when you're stressed out, you say, I just need to go blow off some steam. I just need to go walk. You walk. You come back. The next argument, you blow up. And then you're feeling bad because you're telling yourself, I said I wasn't going to do this no more. I thought I was done with this because you thought a walk and some shopping or whatever pacifier that you normally use was going to. No, you did something natural for something you should have done spiritual. Every spirit must be addressed by the spirit. The Bible says we're supposed to put on the whole armor of God in Ephesians where we'll be able to stand against the wickedness of this world and the darkness. But I want to I show you something, through, through something very simple and then I'm going to move. When these situations arise, we turn into certain animals. Many of us, when we're stressed, anxious, or depressed, we turn into a turtle. So what we do is we withdraw and the whole world is going on and we put our head in our shells and nobody can reach you, nobody can talk to you, 
Nobody can penetrate your hardcore. And for you, that's the best way that you see to deal with it. Because every time you stick your head out, there's life. And rather than deal with life, take your head in your shell. Some of us turn into a pig. We take the dirt and we put it all over us so other people can address it. And we can talk about it. But we don't want to deal with it. We just want to talk about it. Because you see this mud on me. And why do you smell like that? Because of what I've been through. You don't want to deal with what you've been through. You don't want to change what you've been through. But you just want to talk about it. Other people, they turn into dogs. They take it. They dig a hole. And they bury it. And they feel, the further I put this in the hole, I don't have to deal with it. But you still know it's there. And lastly, there are a lot of people, and you might be sitting by one, they turn into skunks. They little, but they poke. And they don't say nothing, and they don't say nothing. And they just towed it and towed it around, and they turn around, and when they let go, they blast everything in sight. But what they don't understand is that second of blasting takes a process of time for those that you've sprayed with your stress to get that off of them. And I'm sorry, don't get this off. So what, what do we need to do? Let me give you some things to do. Will you play something soft, man, so I can stay calm? I, there's a ministry moment we're going to have here in a moment. I'm going to pray over y'all in just a second. I got, I got eight things I want to discuss. He's playing five points early, but I just, I'm flowing with the Spirit of God. Because I believe the point has been made and I believe God is working in this place. But I got to give you some steps of what you need to do in 1 Thessalonians. Those of you that really want to be free today, I just want you to really start focusing in and just praying within yourself. Um, you can go to Facebook and get the notes. I don't want you to miss this God moment taking notes. And you know this is a studious church, but I really want you guys free. I've been... I, I've been in a room, wouldn't get a haircut, wouldn't shave for three months. My career was over. My back was messed up. There's no football. You know, I'm a failure. How am I going to live the life that I wanted to live? How am I going to take care of my mom? Nobody's going to want me. All the people that was betting on me, now they're looking at me saying, if he didn't make it, who's going to make it? And I put all my eggs in one basket. There's no more NFL. What? I've been there. I've been there. I've been stressed out as your pastor. Everybody's rejoicing over this building. This took years off of my life. And then in the midst of it, you get talked about and dogged, and then people walk away. That's stressful. That's stressful. And then you go home and you snap at your wife, and she's not really the, 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 the point, but she's the only dartboard there. Because the other people, if you really do it to them, they'll never forgive you. But she understands it's just a temporary moment of insanity. But then how much of it can she take? Am I talking in here? I don't think it's going to get no realer than this. So those of you that know that you need this prayer in this ministry moment, forget the notes. Lock in with God right here. Just, just lock in. Just just lock in with God. We'll get you the notes. You can go to Facebook. Somebody will share them with you. Heck, if you need to, they'll give you the CD. It ain't but three bucks, two bucks. If you just, hey, I don't have it, they'll give you the CD. It's not about just, so burn extra copies today for people that's taking notes. Okay, cool. But I just want you to get free. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12, it says that we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. 
13, and to esteem them very high in love for their work's sakes and be at peace among yourselves. Here's point number one that you need to do to free yourself of sad. Number one, esteem spiritual leadership. Wait a minute, that, what, what does that have to do with anything, Pastor? You have to esteem your spiritual leadership because spiritual leaders have spiritual insight to spiritual wickedness. In one word from your man of God that you've tested, that's tried, that's true, that'll come up later, can really change your life. But if you don't esteem them, people that you don't esteem, you don't listen to. Number two, it says, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16, I'm just going down the verses now. It says, rejoice evermore. Understand joy is your strength. Joy is not happiness. No, joy is your strength. But it says, rejoice evermore. When you rewind something, you bring it back. When you remember, you, you roll it back in your mind. When you rejoice, you have to go back and joy and then go back and joy and then you have to go back. Again. Joy is not something you do once. It's something that you continue to do because that's your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So you have to ask yourself, how is my joy right now? If I'm down, that means I haven't been operating in joy. Number three, respect the consistency of prayer. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean pray every day, all day, 575. No, no, no. It just means the consistency. When you're down, when you are sad, you don't feel like praying. You're like, what's the use? I was praying before I got here. If prayer was going to do anything, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have landed. It, was, it would have done something by now. No, respect the consistency of prayer. Don't stop praying. Amen. Number four, here's a question. Can you thank God in it? Wow. 5 and 18 says this, in everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning. It seems crazy, Selena. <laughs> but to stand up in a state of depression and say, God, I, I, I thank you that you're with me. <laughs> That's an acknowledgement that something greater is with you. And that's what's going to get you out of it. it don't think, you don't thank him for it. You thank him in it. Because if you can thank him in it, come here, Paul and Silas, you can get out of it. Number five, don't ignore the Holy Spirit. Here's 19. It says, quench not the Spirit. Now let me give you contextually what this is saying in an Amplified Version. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You don't subdue it and you don't be unresponsive. If he's saying forgive, you go respond and you forgive. Because when you don't acknowledge him, you quench him. And it's the Spirit that wants to work. But when you don't acknowledge him, you put him down. Verse number seven, I mean number seven. No, number six, we're at number six, right? Always be open to a true word from the Lord. Here's verse number 20, it says it. Despise, not prophesize. What do you mean by that? You'll get to a place <laughs> and, the, and the enemy will trick your mind and I'll say, thus said the Lord, this is your day of freedom. That's prophetic. But then you'll be like, heard that before and you've turned down an opportunity to hear a true word from a true person from the Lord Amen. say always be, open. always be open number seven number seven we have two more and then we're gonna pray number seven don't let go of the good to grab what's convenient 
When you're in those situations, you result to comfort. And many times the comfort that we result to is the comfort of sin. It's convenient. It's convenient. It's more convenient to drown my sorrows than to confront them. It's more convenient for me to act aggressively towards somebody else that I can overpower versus go to the person that got the power over me. Look what the word says. I'm doing it all by the word. I'm doing it all by the word. I'm doing it all by the word. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. You have to hold on to what's good good when your mind and your thoughts are entertaining bad things hey I had to hold on to what was good even though I had suicidal thoughts but I had to hold on to what was good because if I don't hold to what was good now I'm somebody that you're reading about versus somebody that's testifying This is a powerful day, y'all. I feel the power of the Holy Spirit helping people break free in this place today. Here's the last one. Check your proximity. Check your proximity. What do you mean? Number 22 says, abstain from all appearances of evil. Amplified version says, abstain from every form of evil, withdraw and keep away from it. So check your proximity. What, what, what evil are you entertaining? What, what things are you around? What things are you doing? What you're trying to break free, but you still got the wrong stuff around you. And when you do all of this, here's the result. And the very God of peace sanctify you whole you can't just put it all on him you got to do your part and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ faithful I love this is he that calleth you will also will who also faithful Is he that calleth you who also he'll do it if you do your part. He'll do it for you today if you'll do your part. He will do it for you today if you do your part. But the song says God is able to do just what he said he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you but here is the prerequisite but don't give up on God see if you give up on God he can't do his part but if you don't give up on God here's the good news I feel preacher here he won't give up on you he's able Depression cannot overtake you. Stress cannot overtake you. Sadness cannot overtake you. Fear cannot overtake you. Anxiety cannot overtake you. Ulcers cannot overtake you. It cannot overtake you. Now this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what the Lord gave me to do. God, no, He won't give up. Y'all start saying that. you, He's able. Okay. Now here we go. Here's the moment. Those of you that fall in this category and you know I was preaching to you today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come to this altar. But listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I want you to come to this altar. But I want you to come to this altar bold. I want you to come to this altar aggressive. I want you to come to this altar like you're approaching your father. Saying, Father, it's time. And I'm, this is not a pity party. This is a praise party. Because we once were lost but now we found. We once were down, but now we're up. And we're ready to give God a praise because we're not going to give up on God. We're not going to let go of Him today. And God is going to meet you right where you are and do His part 
if you just give God a praise and put on the spirit of praise and the garment of praise. Come on, let's raise it up for God is able to do. Because he won't. He won't. No. He's able. He's able. Yeah. Yeah. This is the praise party. We not hanging our head today. We free today, baby. He's, He's able. able. He's able. Yes, God. Yes, God. Say it again. Oh God. He's able. Those of you right here, let me pray for you because I said I would. But I'm telling you, after I pray for you, I want you to give your all to this song. I want you to worship God like you've never worshipped Him before. I want you to sing. It don't matter if it sounds good or bad. You just open your spirit up today and let's go and raise the roof in this place. God, I thank you right now for strong men and women. I thank you for people that are bold in you. I thank you that the shackles are falling off of them in the name of Jesus. I thank you that as I pray, Holy Spirit, you strengthen them. Holy Spirit, you empower them. Holy Spirit, you heal them. Holy Spirit, you help them. I thank you, Father, that they are honest, that they are transparent, and that your anointing permeates in this place. Thank you, Father, that we are free and free indeed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God is able to. God is able to do just what He said. Yeah. He will do. He's gonna fulfill. Yes. Don't give up on God. Don't give up Don't on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. He won't give up. Why? He's able. He's able. Yes, he's able. Yeah. 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 He's able. Y
this moment. Don't allow anything to make you challenge what God has done in this room today 
and what God has done into in your heart. I thank you, Father, for boldness. I thank you, Father, for freedom. I thank you, Father, for those that maybe today the, the door was just open. I thank you for the steps of process. I thank you for total healing. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Can we lift up a praise in the room on today? You may go back to your seats. Would you spread love to somebody as you're on your way to your seat? Tell them we did it. 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 Hallelujah. Tell them we did it. Tell them we did it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. There were a lot of people that said you wouldn't make it to this day. There were a lot of people that said you wouldn't be free. You even told yourself you wouldn't be free. But look at you now. <laughs> Don't it feel good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the people in this room that need a life-giving relationship with you. Pray that they're able to choose you as Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we all acknowledge you to come into our hearts. Be our Lord, be our Savior, to guide us in the things that we need to, to live perfectly for you in Jesus' name. Perfectly being completed by you in Jesus' name, we say amen. amen. Hey, I, I want to ask this question. I know that we're in this worship time, but, but I just feel that there are people that have been looking for a church, and, and God sent you here today, and maybe you've been visiting us for the past few weeks, or maybe this is your first time, or maybe you didn't even come to join a church, but it's just an undeniable presence of God that you need to call this place home. I, I would be honored to be your pastor, to serve you with integrity and humility. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you this word so you can live an overcoming life. I feel the spiritual connection with many of you that you need to have a place that you call home. This don't be a person that stops by church, stops by church. Be at a church where you can be planted and that you can grow. Are we the best church in Atlanta? No. I mean, I, 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 I say no. Are, are we perfect? No. Um, is everything here the best? No. Some people in the seat say yes, but I say no. But what I'm trying to get you to see is there are other places that may have better stuff, but you can't manufacture this. Oh this is authentically God. And you need to be in an environment where you can grow and learn in the word. Partners, when we want people to join our church today. So what does it take to join this church? Simply wanting to be here. But pastor, I'm not perfect. I didn't ask you that. You're sitting on a row with people that's not perfect. The thing that I ask you is, do you want to call this place home? And I'd be honored to be your pastor. So by a show of hands, is there anybody that want to join this church today? Anybody? I see you right there. Anybody? I know there's got to be more than her today. I know there's got to be more than her. Anybody else? Am I missing people? I see y'all right there. Come on, where are the rest of my people at that's joining today? I see you right there. If There you go. If you got to make a raise of hand, make a raise of hand. Anybody else today? Listen, those of you that joined our church, girl, lady back over there in the corner, she was looking, somebody did her arm like that, and she looking like, I, I'm joining? I, yes, you joined. I'm, I'm serious, in real life. It happened. So those of you that joined our church today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get your Bible, your books, and your personal belongings. The first thing that we want to do when you join our church is give you some love. My wife is standing right here to hug your neck and to get a quick